What is the smallest thing that you can imagine? Well, depending on how good your imagination is, you might be able to imagine two very small things. But can you imagine Planck length? Well, let's find out. The Planck length is 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 35 of a meter. In other words, it is this small. But we can't just start off by trying to imagine something that small. We need to practice a little bit first or else we risk some serious imagination injuries. So let's start off by using our imaginations to think of some very small things and then kind of work our way up to or actually down for that matter to the Planck length. In the early 1800s, John Dalton revived the idea of the atom originally theorized by ancient Greeks. In his initial model, the atom was the smallest unit of matter and couldn't be divided. Neither atoms could be created nor could they be destroyed. So here we have a hydrogen atom and this is very small, much much smaller than we can actually see even with the most powerful microscopes. But we can still go smaller than that. The size of this atom is 31 picometers or 3.1 times 10 to the power minus 11 meters. Let's put that in perspective. If I took a grain of sand and scaled that grain up so that along each side was 30 kilometers, then the size of an atom would be the size of a grain of sand. That's how small atoms are. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford conducted an experiment in which he shot positively charged alpha particles on a very thin sheet of gold fog. What he found was that most of these particles passed straight through the gold without any deviation. This meant that atoms were just largely empty space. So now let's imagine the nucleus inside the atom. Here to make things a little easier, we are going to imagine the hydrogen atom. And the nucleus of this is just a single proton. I said the atoms were largely empty space, but what I really meant was almost completely empty space. If this is the size of an atom, then the nucleus will be this small. Well, to put it another way, if the atom was the size of a big sports stadium, then the nucleus would be the size of a grain of sand. This proton is 10 to the power minus 15 of a meter. So can we go a smaller than a proton? Most definitely, protons are made of quarks. Three quarks make one proton. A proton, it is made up of two up quarks and one down quark. The sizes from here on are not actually confirmed, but we have got to go on. Holding the quarks together is another elementary particle called the glue. The quark is one thousandth of the size of a proton. In other words, if the proton was the size of a football, then the quark would be again the size of a grain of sand. Quark is 1 times 10 to the power minus 18 of a meter. So are we anywhere near Planck length? Well, we are not even close. So is there anything smaller than a quark? Yes, and this is a million times smaller than a quark. This is called a neutrino. A neutrino is 10 to the power minus 24 of a meter. This means if a quark was a kilometer in diameter, then a neutrino would again be the size of a grain of sand. What are you thinking? Are we near the Planck length? Still nowhere near Planck length. This is a hundred billion times smaller than even a neutrino. But before we finally try to visualize this, let's learn a little bit more about the Planck length. Well, how did we get to this unbelievably small size? There are three constants in the universe. They are constants, therefore they are always the same, no matter wherever in the universe you are or how fast do you travel. The first one is the speed of light in a vacuum. This is always a constant and no matter how fast you travel. Also there is the gravitational constant and the third one is the Planck constant. This constant relates a photon's energy to its frequency. All of these constants have units associated with them. And yes, it is possible to combine these constants together so that most of their units will cancel out. And all we are left with is a length which is the Planck length. So why is it that important? Well, 
by our current understanding of physics, it is impossible to measure anything smaller than this length. But in reality, we can't measure even anything closely approaching this size at the moment. But it might be possible to build a measuring device that could measure absolutely any length in the universe. But it would still be impossible to measure smaller than this. The Planck length is also the scale at which it is thought that quantum gravitational effects become relevant. There is another effect of the Planck length and that's to do with special relativity. According to special relativity, as you travel faster and faster and faster and approach the speed of light, then your length in the direction of travel will appear to an observer to get shorter and shorter. This phenomenon is called length contraction. You don't actually get short, it just appears to an observer that you do. This means that if two people are moving at different speeds, then they will disagree on the length of an object. However, it is believed that they will always agree on the size of the Planck length, no matter how fast they are traveling. So, how would it be to imagine the Planck length? It is just mind-meltingly small. Here we have a 30 cm ruler. Here we can see 1 mm. The human XL is 0.1 mm in diameter. Coincidentally, this is about the smallest thing that can be seen with the naked eye. The human XL is halfway in the size between the Planck length at one extreme and the other extreme we have the size of the observable universe. What I mean is, if this tiny XL here was scaled up so that it was the size of the observable universe today, that's all about 2 trillion galaxies, then the Planck length will be the size of this XL. That's really, truly tiny. Well, hello, let's come back to our normal scale where we can see everything clearly. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, consider subscribing for more videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.